That looks right. There we go. Perfect. Calibrated. <laughs> and then we will. Oh, that was. <laughs> I got lucky. <laughs> that was lucky. <laughs> that was fast. I didn't have a whole lot available to work with for this first one. So I used a lot of very old electronics I had lying around. And you can see it's an absolute rat's nest in there. Um, some of the stuff is on a breadboard, some is soldered to an Arduino uh, Nano. Um, that looks like the load cell amplifier. It's all hot glued together. Um, I had to uh, sacrifice a kitchen scale to get the first load cell because I couldn't figure out where to buy them initially. Um, I think this is from an old FPV drone like remote control system. Uh, some really high tech hot glued LEDs on here and then a hot glued <laughs> OLED. <laughs> and you can see the dosing mechanisms are just exposed here. You can see the motors on them actually. Um, but it, it did it work. It, it proved the concept. And then I think honestly my personal favorite of the, the the prior versions is this one because it really reminds me of that thing from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, that yes. robot with the answer to the meaning of life. Um, 42. Yeah, yeah, that. <laughs> but this quickly demonstrated why having buttons up here is a terrible idea because you're you're trying to push it and it just runs away from you. you know? <laughs> Um, it looks cool, it doesn't work at all. And then also when you're standing over it, you can't even see the screen, you had to kind of crouch down in front of it. Um, so you can see it got a little bit cleaner, I think this was on a better printer, and the circuit board here was uh, on a perf board. Still took hours and hours and hours to assemble. And then finally I moved up to printed circuit boards. Uh, an early version was in the V1, um, and that version was just the circuit board itself, but I still had to hand solder on at least 100 joints for each one, and that was, uh, a, a production uh, inefficiency for sure, uh, but it worked. And then finally, this with the most recent version, upgraded to a fully assembled printed circuit board with all the components on it in one piece. They arrive, I put them in, I solder a few things on, and I move on to the next one. So this is this has changed my life. <laughs> it's made things a lot better. Hello, we are taking a look at some really, really cool bean dosers from my friend Barrett here with uh, Big Bean Vibes, which is your, your IG handle. But uh, yeah, this is something that uh, I think is really, really cool. You've seen this kind of in the background of some of my videos and I wanted to have Barrett come over and talk a bit about how did all of this happen? What are we even looking at? And uh, just, you know, how did you even get into all of this? So uh, without further ado, here is Barrett. Yeah, so I'm Barrett. Um, this is the accountant, uh, Bean Doser that I've been working on for maybe two, two and a half years at this point. Um, it started as kind of a passion project. I was at the end of medical school. I had a lot of free time. I needed a lot of caffeine to get through medical school. And I had seen kind of bean dosers out there. Uh, and I wanted one, but wasn't really willing to shell out for what was available mm -hmm. at the time. And when you have a 3D printer and some microcontrollers, kind of every problem becomes really tempting to tackle. Uh, so I took it from there. And here on the table, we have some of the very first prototypes all the way to what I'm currently shipping. And it'd be really fun to kind of go over what, where it started and how it's gone from here. This is just another fantastic story of someone who is getting into the, the coffee hobby, the industry, and creating a product that solves a problem. And it's also done for passion reasons. Like you did this because you're just genuinely passionate about coffee. And this is just a really cool product. Uh, and I want to show that off. And I never expected it to work. Mm, yeah, so was, uh, hey, it does work. Yeah, this is a really great product too. Like it, it does exactly what it's supposed to do, which is way out and, and dose beans. But what is your background? Like how did, how do you go from medical school to making coffee products? Yeah, yeah. So in undergrad, I, I was a math major and I also engineering. Um, so I have a little bit of background, not really in what it took to make these, but yeah, from then on, it's been a lot of watching YouTube videos and using the free uh, educational material out there. And if you have, I think these days, if you have a 3D printer and an ESP32, make anything you want. So why a bean doser <laughs> out of all, all the things you of can make? Of all things, <laughs> of all things, a rather niche, uh, niche interest here. Well, yeah, so I had, um, like coffee for a while, I had gotten into espresso, and once you get deep enough down that rabbit hole, you start worrying about your beans being mm -hmm. fresh. So like many people, I, I also resorted to storing uh, beans in little containers, mm -hmm. which means that every time you get a fresh bag of beans, you have to weigh it out by hand and store it and put it away. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think like many people, uh, you kind of realize, well, I really don't enjoy this monotonous task, especially <laughs> the more and more you do it. 
and like, like I said earlier, there, I saw that there were devices on the market and I wanted one. And I thought, you know what, I have this printer, let's see what I can do here, I have some free time. Mm -hmm. um, and ultimately I had seen like the other, the other dosers out there do things a certain way. And I initially tried to replicate that just using really, really cheap components. Uh, and it, it didn't really work for me, it didn't work for me. And at one point I had kind of an epiphany about how I might dose beans better and um, built the first prototype with those uh, dosing mechanism mm -hmm. inside of it. And that's actually it here. Uh, so this is, I don't know, zero, 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 zero one, zero, maybe? Yeah. It actually still works, which is really funny, although I don't think we'll put anyone through the, the suffering of watching. It's, <laughs> it's very slow. Uh, but actually, yeah, this one is, version two is plugged in here, but I'll plug this one in really quick here. So this is um, barely held together with hot glue. Uh, everything is stuck in here. I don't know, maybe I can show the back really quick. It's just kind of a rat's nest in there. Hmm. See it? Yeah. Um, but this is the original kind of proof of concept of the dosing mechanism, mm -hmm. which has been in every version ever since. Uh, so it's very simple. You have a hopper to put your beans in the top. You have some kind of interface on the front, and you have a scale on the bottom. Um, and in this case, um, all this is kind of retrofitted to fit in here. This version kind of demonstrated to me that this idea could work, mm -hmm. but was going to need a lot, a lot more effort yeah. to make it viable. <laughs> um, so then came around, I don't even want to call it version two because this never shipped. And as you can see, some of the controls moved. It looks a little bit more thought through. Uh, the circuit board is much less of a mess, uh, but otherwise, the way it works is pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. uh, and then finally, through you know a lot of community input, posting on forums, seeing what people wanted in the doser in terms of the volume of beans, the speeds, the accuracy, ultimately got to version one. I'll call it version one. This is, this <laughs> version is version one. actually like 1.0, which mm -hmm. actually shipped. And this is actually the very first unit that was intended to be production. I just, I guess I hung on to it. Yeah. <laughs> For memory's sake. Um, and then this has been out there for probably a year now. And, mm -hmm. I, and over that time, got a ton of feedback from users. So I, I appreciate everyone who took the risk of buying something so mm -hmm. unproven from someone who just popped out of nowhere, but ultimately got all sorts of feedback about ideas and mm -hmm. ways that it could be improved. And because this is 3D printed, as I think it would be hopefully obvious from the, <laughs> the surface bit, of yes. some of these devices, I can iterate really, really fast on what people ask for. Mm -hmm. So uh, things that people ask for in this device, this one was currently plugged in. It has to be plugged in all the time to run. Um, so people wanted it to be wireless and battery powered, rechargeable. Uh, they wanted it to be USB-C instead of this barrel jack that I was using. They wanted firmware updates, because of course, after I shipped some, I thought of a new great idea, uh -huh. and then anyone who wanted it had to ship it back to me. Mm -hmm. um, which, you know, happy to do for any, anyone who wants. Um, and then other things like one customer wanted a like a beep to tell him when it was done. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes, I guess if you're in a busy cafe or something like that, you don't always notice when it's finished because yeah. at the end it can be very quiet. Mm -hmm. And all those things I kind of added on, added on, took notes. And then finally, when I went to version two, tried to integrate as much of that as possible, write the code in such a way that features could be added on. So the latest version looks very similar to the original and mechanically it is very similar, but it, it's just using much more sophisticated hardware on the inside. Um, it's, you know, like everything people asked for and there's a discord for this mm -hmm. and people ask for features and if it's feasible, I write it and I push that firmware the next day. This can be updated over Wi-Fi with your phone or with your computer mm -hmm. um, and it's just continued to evolve and I love that, uh, you know, I can just, mm -hmm. <laughs> Whatever people want, I try to give them. And how I originally found out about this was actually through the Cafetech farm, uh, which one of my friends, he bought a version one of this. Very early one, I think. Very early. And, you know, he brought it over and we were, we were using it. Um, a lot of my friends now have gotten into home roasting. So these guys are trying to run splits on, on their home roasts. And even when they're buying, you know, these very fancy coffees, it's like you want to be able to dose out like 10, 15 grams easily. And you just, you just dump the entire bag in here. And uh, what's really nice about this is you're able to just like really expedite sharing of beans to people. I was like, those are the guys who are going to ask for some of the most obscure requests and features uh, out of all of this. And it's just super cool to see that um, you as a founder and a creator and inventor of a product are, are e willing to I I iterate and, you know, say, hey, actually, that's a great idea and, and push that update uh, in both a, a physical change of something and also uh, the, the firmware. I have also used this in my regular job where uh, I needed to fill a bunch of uh, coffee pods uh, at an expo. And we literally had one of these and we just plugged it in and it really expedited the entire process. And um, it's, it's also, I think, one of the few bean dosers that can do very um, small volumes. Like on, on some of these other dosers that I've used, it's like uh, if you're trying to do less than 
10 grams. Like you're trying to do like five grams or seven grams, say for something like a bribe or cupping or <laughs> things like that, right? You want small doses. Yeah, like I have friends now brewing 10 gram V60s. They're, you know, very small dose coffees and they want a very, you know, specific amount. It is very nice to just be able to like dose stuff out specifically for those people. This can do like very, very accurate uh, amounts of coffee. The project goals for me were to make something that was small, compact, not too heavy. I know some people actually even put like lay this down and put it in a drawer because mm. it's small enough to do that. Uh, but really for me, accuracy was, was paramount mm -hmm. because if you're doing the small doses that you were talking mm -hmm. about, plus minus one bean comes into play. It sounds ridiculous, but um, yeah. it, it, it can come into play. And that was kind of my target was less than plus minus one bean, which mm -hmm. is, it makes everything is it's, nothing's perfect, but it's very very close to that. And because of the, the way that it's able to do that, you can pretty confident uh, confidently get, you know, those really small seven, eighteen. I'm I'm in this even more niche category where I'm like I want multiple of these with even less capacity, so I can pour my hundred grams and I, have like you yeah. know my four different coffees because I'm going through so many different coffees all the time. A, a user did request. Um, a shorter hopper, version, <laughs> which is very easy for me to make. So mm -hmm. there is one out there, I don't remember what number it is, that has like a, a hopper that's probably half as tall mm -hmm. because the customer said, yeah. I, I only use this much at a time, uh -huh. like I don't want the hopper, but okay, anything you want. Like this is a very niche product where you're aware of that. Um, is this for like people who are running cafes? Is this for the home enthusiast crowd? Like I can tell you that a lot of people I know are actually kind of like verging, bridging the gap between two. It's like they're, they're roasting now and trying to sell stuff so they can like produce samples and pack samples very easily. But then they're also splitting coffees with people. Uh, and then you have people like me who are using this to split like coffee purchases that I buy out to people. Like who, what, who, who do you think this is for? Yeah, I think that there are a few groups that could somehow find a use for this. So mm -hmm. probably the most common would be the home user who uh, pre-doses their coffee into, right. into uh, containers, mm -hmm. whatever you may use, up to you know whatever ma maximum or minimum amount that you want to mm -hmm. do. Um, and they are typically getting their, it depends how much coffee you go through, but you do your one or two bags a week, you use it to very quickly fill your cellars, yeah. and then you put it away. Right. Right, and that was, that was the way I intended it to be used mm -hmm. because um, like any hopper on any device, this is not sealed and it cannot be properly sealed. Mm. No, no dosing mechanism of any that I've seen on the bottom can actually be sealed. Right. So even if you put a lid on it and that's airtight, it's, it's not meant for long-term coffee mm -hmm. storage. But if you're using it for a small amount for a week or you know, whatever period, yeah. that's totally up to you. And it kind of depends mm -hmm. on, on your beans. Um, so that would be one group is the home enthusiast who pre-doses. Then another use could be, and I, I do have one customer who bought two of these for a cafe mm -hmm. where they take one of those kind of mobile cafe things out. Oh, and yeah. they'll fill up a bunch of their um, bean containers before they go out. So same idea, they'll fill up two of these and go two-handed, I guess. Mm. I'm not sure how they <laughs> do that. I haven't seen that. Um, and they fill up and go. So that's kind of a higher volume, more commercial type use. Mm -hmm. Someone wanted to buy nine of them oh, and network them. And from a station, like request a certain percentage of each bean type to make like custom, oh, custom bled, mixed copies. That's interesting. On demand. That feature is not available yet, but it's possible. <laughs> and then there's the roaster who either um, you know has a, a fresh roast they're testing. This is always on the bench full of the latest coffee. Mm -hmm. And it just saves you that having to have the scale and the bags and the cups and everything. It's yeah. there. You set the cup down and it goes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, let's show off how this works. We can show off like rapid dosing and also talk a little bit about uh, what can you actually do with this. Because you can actually do so a, a surprising amount of things with this. Even though it is sounds incredibly simple, like it is incredibly simple, but you can actually do a lot of cool stuff with it. So yeah. let's uh, show off the current version. The current version. So we got this guy set up. Let's show how it works. Show how it works. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's already on here, but if it mm -hmm. weren't, any of the buttons you press will just turn it on. It goes to sleep on its own. Mm -hmm. And then there are kind of two use cases. The first is it's on, and you only want it to dose when you push a button, mm -hmm. um, or the other use case is kind of like you're trying to get through a high volume quickly and efficiently dosing or bagging or whatever, and that's an auto mode, and I'll show both here. So it, when it boots up, it's just it shows the weight you request, the weight that's currently on the scale, and a few other things like battery percentage and mode. And here, as long as this is good to go, it will just request a dose here. All right, so the requested dose was 18.0, and it gave 18.01. <laughs> wow. 
Wow. That, so I guess we, we messed up. Yeah, you it, messed it's up. It's a hundredth oh, no. of a gram off. <laughs> um, and that took about 7.2 seconds, which is on the slow end. Well, mm -hmm. you know, we can run it another time here. Yeah. But yeah, you can basically program how fast you have this ramp up, ramp down. Um, and it is, yeah, it just goes to the hundredth gram. So it's gonna be hard to see on the camera here, but. 18.04. 18.04. Oh, it went down. Two. Okay, it yeah. Went down. <laughs> our table, yeah, our table's not the flattest in the world here. But yeah, the, the, the thing is here is that you can go really, really accurate. Like we're talking like literally half a bean or one bean uh, off if, if at all. Um, and the thing is too, you can also program this like for production environments, right? Or whatever you're trying to do, depending on how tolerant you are to like hundredths of a gram off of, of a bead of your dose, right? Like the, all of that is programmable. Generally, like I've experienced, at least on the, on, on the older version of this, around three, four seconds, like, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, you you show like the half seconds, for, right? You're like point, uh, like 3.4 seconds, yeah, you know? It, it's it like, displays <laughs> to the 10th of a second yeah. how long it took. That I, I put that on there mm -hmm. more for me when I was trying to figure out like, what can I tell people about speeds? Mm -hmm. But I thought it was cool to leave it. Um, mm -hmm. So it's totally transparent how fast <laughs> it will go. And every bean does run a tiny bit differently. Like when I ship it, I have it set very conservatively where it will always get the dose you want, but it, it could be pushed faster if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. But since some beans just flow differently, the surface the, of, of the bean, the weight, yeah. um, I don't want the first time a customer to use it for it to overshoot, because mm -hmm. that's like the most annoying thing. Yeah. So if you're willing to just tweak a few settings, you can get it uh, reliably in like the four second range. This is how I've been using it is, you know, I'll take my dose uh, here, and all I do is I do this, you know, I pour my, my coffee in here, and then we're gonna do this backwards. <laughs> and then I just pour it in here. And then I know this is 18 grams. And then yeah. if I want to keep going, I just put this guy back here. Yeah, so it's in manual mode. Oh yeah, it's in manual mode. But if he if he were filling his whole rack of beans, yeah, the way do, we would we do, can this, do that. We so do it, so right. yeah, let's keep filling. So you put it into auto mode, it tells you when it's ready. And now if I can do this without knocking stuff over, you just set the cup there and it just goes. It's uh, 17.98. Yeah, so very, very accurate. And we can adjust that speed at the end there too. So yeah. right now, you know, we're definitely more conservative. We're trying to get the most accurate uh, dose there. But yeah, like this is literally how I use this. Yeah. And then you just rinse and repeat and you keep going. And um, that's how you fill these up. And it makes sharing coffee very, very easy. Um, also single dosing for yourself. So whenever you are uh, trying to actually, you know, brew espresso or whatever, um, you know that your doses are very, very accurate. And it's just such a time saver versus doing this every single time. And I have to like fiddle around. And the more um, you have to fill, the more time it saves. Oh yeah. So it's, it's just like, kind of a quality of life thing. That's the accountant. It's like very, very complex product here, you know, but, but like it just saves so much time. It makes my life easy and um, I, I like it a lot. And because people use this in settings that I am not in and I do not use it, they just keep bringing me great ideas for mm. the next feature. And then I, I just have a Discord and I just upload the firmware files there and you can revert to whatever version you want or use the latest. Mm -hmm. um, just connect to it with any Wi-Fi connected device. It doesn't need any network connectivity, so it doesn't. it's not talking to a server, it's just direct. Mm -hmm. um, and you can upload whatever firmware version you want. We can even start branching into like different use cases, yeah. networked stuff, we'll, we'll see. I, I can't make any promises about what we'll do, but <laughs> I try to implement what people ask for. All right, let's uh, do a little bit of a close-up of the account so you'll be able to see the display and everything. I'll uh, bear it, go over everything. I just think this is really cool. So let's take a look at that. So here we have the front of the device. We have the, the catch cup here um, and it's currently off. So any of the buttons will turn it on. Needs a few seconds to stabilize the load cell in there. So it's best to not touch the, the device or push on the scale while it's doing that. And then we have here um, the display, just kind of like the minimum amount of information that you need. The number on the top is the requested dose. So uh, it's currently set to 18. There is a dose menu in the settings that I'll show later that you can really go in and tune. But if you just wanna make quick adjustments, the D-pad here can make whole gram adjustments or tenths of gram adjustments. Um, and then the number on the bottom is the weight on the scale. Um, so it boots up into manual mode, which means that if you wanna get coffee out of it, um, you have to push a button. So when you put the cup on, nothing happens. It just registers the cup weight. And then if you push the, the middle button over here, and this is all in the manual, um, it goes ahead and it'll do a tear. 
and there you go, 4.6 seconds, 17.99, 98, 98 grams. Um, so that's manual mode. Um, and that works well if you've kind of got it set up and you only want to dose every once in a while. Uh, but kind of the, really the only mode that I use is manual mode. So if you put the mode button, it will go and tell you when it's ready. It'll say auto ready. And then now it will simply detect the cup when you put it on there. And one thing I want to note um, is that the amount of time it waits is, uh, is a setting you can adjust. So if you, you know, if you have difficulty getting things lined up, you can make that time longer. Or if you get a hang of it and you can just throw the cup in really fast, you can make that uh, tear delay shorter so that overall it takes less time. And when the cup goes on there, it goes. So 18.01 in 5.9 seconds. Um, so that's kind of the general functionality of the two main modes. And then everything else is fine tuning and settings and updating and things like that. Now I'm going to do a walkthrough of the menu system, um, which you can use to fine tune some parameters and update the device. So here it's off and pushing any of the uh, eight buttons here will wake it up. And again, it will stabilize and it boots up automatically into manual mode. And like before pressing the mode button switches between the two modes. Now it says auto ready. So for the, just so that it doesn't trigger anything, I'm going to leave it in manual for now. And the, uh, using the settings button, we can enter the settings menu. And there are just a couple fields here that I wanted to highlight. So the first is actually the dose menu. This is where you can go to really fine tune stuff. Again, the way I ship it from the factory, you shouldn't really have to mess with this unless you're really hunting really high speeds or want to do something specific. Um, so if we go into the dose menu, we have a target, an offset, and an undershoot value. And the way that this works is the target is what you're aiming to get your final dose to. And the offset has to do with when it decides to switch from the fast dosing process to the, the slow precise. Um, and generally the way I have this set, it will just work uh, pretty well for all beans, but you, you may wanna go in here, adjust it in specific ways that I, I won't go into here because I think it's better written out in the manual. And then the undershoot is, uh, you can tell the device how much it's acceptable to undershoot the target by. Because the issue is if you set your target to 18, it's always gonna try to get to 18. So it's either going to hit 18 exactly or go one bean past. And really you want to get like plus minus a half bean around your target. So in the default is a 10th of a gram. So what that means for an 18 gram target is that it will say that a 17.9 is acceptable, if that makes sense. And that kind of helps you hit that window of a single bean weight, but again, totally configurable to whatever you want. Uh, so that's the dose menu. Next we have the preferences menu, which just covers uh, three things. The first is the, uh, the beeper to let you know when it's finished. So again, a cool customer request that I've really liked ever since. You can turn it on and off. All it will do is it beeps once when it's finished with an accurate dose, and it will give you a triple beep if something went wrong and the dose is off by more than uh, two tenths of a gram. Next we have the timer, which just displays how long it's been dosing on the screen. I originally wrote this as a debugging feature and more for me to collect data. But since I had written it, I left it in there for people who want to see it. Um, and then the delay here is what um, allows you to tell it how long you want it to wait before it starts when you set the cup on it. So if you find that you've really gotten a hang of getting the cup in there quickly and accurately, you can make that really fast and um, then you're waiting less time before it starts. Then there's a calibration submenu where uh, it does come factory calibrated, but if something were to happen to load cell or you know for some reason it's not reading accurately, you can re-tear, or excuse me, recalibrate the scale using any reference weight that you have. Uh, and then my favorite and most recent menu is the update menu. So with the new um, uh, electronics that I, I have in this device, it has Wi-Fi capability. And no, it doesn't need any network connectivity. It's not gonna be connected to your local network. It's not gonna say hi to all of your other computers. Uh, but when this menu is active, it will create a Wi-Fi access point that you can then just directly connect to with your phone or your computer or your tablet or, or whatever it is. Navigate to the IP address on the screen and then there'll be a very simple web page where you can upload whichever firmware you would like to flash to the device. And then it just shows the current version at the very bottom here. And then the last actual menu here is just reset. So you went in, you played with all the parameters and now it's not working right. Well, not to worry. In the uh, reset menu, you can choose to reset the factory settings that I sent it with. Or if you've decided that you now have better factory settings than it was sent with, you can use the overwrite to write those to memory so that the next time you reset it, it will use the settings that you have uh, made yourself. And then last but not least, uh, if you want to tell it to go to sleep rather than just waiting, you can use the sleep 
uh, selection here, and that will just put it to sleep. You're, you're literally trying to shave off like tenths of a second right here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> There you go, that, that's that, better, that 5.4 yeah, seconds. 5.4 seconds. Yeah. I've gotten it down to like four, three, five to four before. Mm -hmm. So that's the basic operation of the accountant. Uh, you can just really bang out all the doses you have and um, it's incredibly straightforward. It's also a lot of cool feature updates that will come on both like, you know, physical and also firmware. But how much coffee can you hold in this uh, right now and also in the uh, dosing cup here? Right, I think that's probably the most important question that people <laughs> want to know. Um, so the hopper will hold about 400 grams or you know, about a pound of coffee, but it depends heavily on the, you know, yeah, the, like the relative weight of the Yeah, like if you got some like real big beans, you know, then uh, big bean vibes, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> it'll, it'll change how much coffee you, could, you can pour in here. Um, exactly, but yeah. I, I would say like any standard bag, even up to the pretty big one pound bags seems to fit. Again, if you want a shorter hopper for less, you can. Going taller probably isn't a good idea. It's gonna get really <laughs> top heavy. Um, and then in the cup itself, this is the standard version that it ships with. But again, because someone asked for it, I I made a larger cup that's like the XL cup um, that will hold more. So the, the small cup here will probably go up to like 25. Yeah. Again, depends on the density and size of the bean. But at that point, it starts to kind of reach the edge and a bean is uh, might trickle out. Yeah. And then the new XL cup will probably comfortably go up to like 45 grams. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of pushing the limit of what you can fit in this space. Right. Um, and then, yeah, beyond that, you, you may have to break things up into multiple doses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for general purposes, unless you're doing very big doses of coffee, uh, for most espresso and you know pour over stuff, that is completely fine. Uh, especially if you're dosing out into typical sized uh, yeah. types of containers, then this totally you know this totally makes sense for for that use case. And then on the current version of this. There's now a battery in it, uh, and you also have a USB-C port yes. here. So what's the battery? Like, it's super funny. You can <laughs> run a, a bean doser uh, with a battery. You can be out in the woods and, and dose your coffee out. As, as long as you have a solar panel, it'll work for you. Yeah. Um, yes, so per customer request, um, it now has a lithium ion battery in it. Um, one of the standard, like, Samsung 18650 mm. cells. So. I don't anticipate it ever wearing out, but if you need it to, you can just take the back off and put another <laughs> one in. Or you can bring multiple if you're really going into the mm -hmm. woods to dose a lot of coffee. Um, and then also because I dislike cables uh, and I want to simplify it as much as possible, it's just USB-C now. Okay. So there's no longer that power jack. It's mm -hmm. just USB-C and it will charge on anything. There's no power delivery requirements. So okay. It can be a computer, your car outlet, mm -hmm. as long as it's five volts, which is you know, standard, Very USB, standard yeah. it's gonna work. Mm -hmm. And in terms of battery life, this is a question that I'm, I have yet to be able to answer <laughs> because I have run out of patience testing it. Oh. And one of the, I went on the Discord to ask people like, hey, has anyone, like, how <laughs> many ran bags, out of battery? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, how long does it last? Like, I don't know. <laughs> and they, one guy said that it arrived with 85% because I, you know, I give it an overnight charge mm -hmm. before I send it. And he ran, I think he said 24 bags and it was still wow. 85%. Wow. So it had not changed. I mean, I use like 5% um, increments mm -hmm. for reporting the percent yeah. charge, uh, but I mean, <laughs> I think that'll be good That's for like most good. people. Yeah, for most people. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm just like, if you were very curious about how long the battery life on your, your bean doser lasts. Like, Longer than you want to find out. Yeah, and that's because the motors, like, you know, the motors you're using in here are very efficient, right? Yeah, they're very, very small, mm -hmm. very efficient, by design to use the smallest, cheapest parts, because I, I was, my goal, the hunt here, is for maximum accuracy, smallest, and as cheap as possible. Mm -hmm. the, the kind of novel part about how this works is that there are two separate dosing mechanisms inside. One of them is larger and one of them is smaller. So the larger one handles the high speed, you know, get close to your target, mm -hmm. but don't overshoot. And then the smaller one kind of, you know, inches its way up mm -hmm. to the target. And that's what allows me to get within a single bean. Mm -hmm. And there were, you know, probably hundreds of iterations of the sizes, mm -hmm. the motors, all that kind of stuff. And I finally settled on something that works. Mm -hmm. And then you have to now consider, you know, manufacturability and how, how easy it is to assemble, how many hours of me trying to yeah. stuff fit in there there is. Yeah, but when you pour your beans in here, you just want to make sure that uh, both of those areas are, are covered and then you're good to go. Um, but you're making this all in your house right now? Correct. 3D printed? Yes. Yeah, so what's, yes. what's that been like? It's, it's been fun. Um, so yes, they are 3D printed and you know, the downside of that is that your volume is limited. Mm -hmm. As a niche product, that hasn't really been an issue. Mm -hmm. um, but the upside of that is that if someone asks for a feature or I make an improvement, 
that means the unit that ships the next day essentially has the latest and greatest mm -hmm. feature. Um, and it's been manageable. I mm. have I had three three D printers. I'm building a fourth one right now. They're all kind of for different things. Yeah. But I have a pretty big one that I can get a decent number of these units out. Mm. Um, and you know, every day I'm just working. How do I make the parts faster, simpler, more reliable, uh, and easier to put together? Because I, I have developed a huge amount of respect for the manufacturing side mm. of industry. Designing is you know, fun and cool, but making something that you can reliably assemble so that each one works the same way, with the same quality, mm. is a whole nother level of difficulty. Yeah, and you're doing that while also implementing a ton of requests from the Discord and these forums, and, and it's just so cool to, to see this uh, have come to life. Like, you know, we have all the different iterations, but it's like, this here is like, you know, really pushing the optimizations of what you can get with a, with a bean doser, right? Uh, you know, I'm like very excited to see what, what else can come from this. Like, you know, you, you now like control your, maybe an app, I don't know if you, you want an app. I want to control my, my things hey, my If someone phone, wants right? to write the app for me, great. <laughs> I don't know if I have the bandwidth for that right now, but yeah. So this version is now available as a non-pre-order. You know, the shipping times vary based on how many I have uh, of the shells I have ready. Mm -hmm. But generally my goal is, you know, guaranteed within three weeks, usually within a week or week and a half, depending on when the order falls. Yes, yeah. I usually ship on Saturdays. So. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, people can email you and they can go check out all of the specific information on the website. It's, it's pretty transparent. I mean, it's a, you know, one, one man operation here. <laughs> like Join the Discord. You can ask current users. Um, you can ask about, you know, maybe stuff we didn't cover here. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, there's a, I don't remember how many people were last time, but there's a lot. So if there's a very niche application question, someone there might be doing it. So, so well, yeah. the thing is, is it's, uh, along those lines, when people hear, oh, you can tune all these parameters that makes them think not approachable. Mm -hmm complex, requiring a lot of interaction with it, where my goal was the opposite, like you throw the cup on and it goes. Yeah. So you, you can tune it as much as you want, but it's going to just work out. Yeah, it just works every time. Like, yeah, like this is just a very cool project. For me, it just makes my life a lot easier. I'm just trying to reduce points of friction whenever I'm making coffee or if I'm trying to like do splits with people. Like, you know, I want something that just like makes my life easy and, and lets me fill up all these coffees. But um, yeah, it's just so cool to be able to showcase uh, how this project started and, and, and all of this. And, you know, please let us know what you guys think about this. If you have any questions for, for Barrett as well, leave them in, in, in the comments uh, below. But, you know, he's local to me, so we can always come back and film more videos and show off anything uh, cool like that. But yeah, otherwise this was the uh, accountant and I wanna thank Barrett for coming here and filming with us and yeah. Thanks for having me, it's mm -hmm. been fun. Yeah. Finally get to see the coffee cave. Yeah, <laughs> all right, thank you so much. All right.